Good evening Ed, and welcome to one-on-one -on -one MMA Institute podcast. Tonight we have a special guest, uh, UFC star, and now, now you're like uh, the guy with most wins in UFC, waterway division, Mr. Neil Magny. Welcome, my friend. Ah, man, it's great to be on here. I haven't talked to you in so long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to introduce everybody, you were the guy who helped me the most in, in US when I was there. I'm always talking about you when I'm talking. I said uh, I was expecting from most of the help from other people, uh, but I got from the from the from the Neil Magny. So thank you for everything when I was there. And uh, yeah, tell me first, how do you feel like uh, uh, number one guy in welterweight division? with a win, with most wins, uh, to not offend other fighters. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it feels great to get to this point, being uh, the welter with the most wins in the history of UFC, um, especially considering how my career started out. Uh, when I first got to UFC, I went one and two, where I won one fight but lost two fights in a row and was in a position where I, I honestly thought the UFC was going to cut me. Uh, so to be here 10 years later, uh, still in the UFC, still ranked, still doing well, um, holding the record for most wins in the organization's history for welterweight. Uh, definitely feels good to be here. Yeah, yeah. And and how is how is the feeling? Like, I know you're down third guy. Uh, and uh, how is the feeling to be like, uh, to get that record and to get on the top over the name like George St. Pierre, who is like one of the goats of, of our sport? Um, to be honest, it was like a, a whole array of mixed uh, emotions that came out at once. Um, on one end, I'm grateful to be uh, mentioned in a conversation with guys like George St. Pierre. Uh, and it's truly an honor to be mentioned in the same conversation as him, uh, regardless of what it may be for. Um, the other side of it is... Uh, um, just so much respect for a guy like GSP. I mean, he's a guy who I looked up to when I first got into the sport. Um, he's arguably the best welterweight in the history of the sport. Um, it, some people even argue he's the best ever uh, in the history of the sport. So um, it is cool to be mentioned in the same conversation for, for different reasons, nothing to take away from the uh, great career that he has and the great legacy that he left in the, in the UFC. Um, and then the other part to it is Though it feels great to go out there and get that that twentieth win and um and be in the position I'm in now, um it, it was kind of a a, a short lived um experience for me, where if this was my last fight and I got the twentieth win, great, it would have been something I could sit down and celebrate right now. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, this is just a a, a mouse a milestone. Um, I feel like I have so much more to accomplish in the sport of uh, mixed martial arts, uh, especially in the organization of the UFC. Um, that like though I'm appreciative for where I'm at now. Um, I can't get too caught up and feel like this is the um, end of the road, so to speak. I still have some great things I want to accomplish uh, and have to keep moving forward. Yeah. So after the fight, uh, obviously, you get into the eye of some fight fighters. The biggest name was uh, Gilbert Burns, if I remember, if I'm correct. And uh, what do you think about that matchup? D did you consider that? As a fight, did you talk with UFC about that, or it just it just ended there on the Twitter? <laughs> yeah, I mean, going into the fight, um, every fighter kind of has that question. Excuse me, has that question playing in the back of your mind, uh, saying like, "All right, when the microphone's in your face and they ask you who you want to fight next, have a name ready." Um, so going into the uh, and going into fight week, in the back of my mind, it was already there. I already knew. Um, whose name I was going to call uh, as soon as I got the opportunity to. Uh, so once that fight uh, was over, once I got the victory, and once they asked me um, who, who I'd want to fight next, uh, it, it was a, a no-brainer. It definitely was going to be uh, Gilbert Burns. Um, when I look at where I'm at in mixed martial arts and I look at where I'm trying to go, um, guys like Gilbert Burns are the guys that I'm excited to fight. He's uh, ranked in the top five. Um, he's one of the best grapplers in the division right now. Um, so he's going to be a great challenge for me in addition to being a guy that's going to uh, help me propel my career in the direction I'm trying to go. Yeah, so... Uh, and 
happening like you are coming from the loss from the Shafkat, yeah, and now you have a, a big win. Uh, the the let's say rising star, the guy who have a couple of fights in the row. I I don't know how how much fights he had the uh, Rodriguez in the row. Uh, like, he was on a four fight win streak when he four, and I fought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are again in that uh, uh, winning back column, and uh, let's say like uh, uh, what. Uh, do you need next to do? Uh, is it the win over the Gilbert Burns is finally putting you again in that uh, conversation for the attacking the belt the, the, to get in that uh, conversation at all? Yeah, I mean, I feel like going out there and get a very dominant win against a guy like Gilbert Burns, who uh, is ranked top five and is in uh, in, in that position. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that if I, uh, I win against him, definitely sets me up for great things moving forward. Um, and it's just one of those things that, like, um, it, it just comes down to availability and opportunity. Like, a lot of guys in the in the top five and the top ten uh, tend to – um, sit out and pick and choose when and whom they fight. Um, I feel like getting an opportunity to fight against Gil Burns now would be a great challenge. Uh, would be a great opportunity for me to really propel my career forward. Yeah, and um, uh, you were a couple of times in, in this position, uh, like today, like one or two fights away from the attacking attacking the belt. Uh, so, what do you think uh, was problem in the past when you were? Uh, hitting that challenge one fight away or something like what what do you think was problem in the past um i think the biggest thing that it came down to is uh complacency um where, where i talked about the d this last fight where um i i did appreciate the fact that i just got that work i did realize that it's a a huge thing that i just accomplished um and i'm not trying to minimize it at all um but i know i haven't arrived at the final destination yet uh so it's kind of like i had to appreciate where i'm at now like okay cool good job but let's keep moving forward um where in the past i feel like um i've i've i I would go forward, get a little bit of success, and then get complacent, get content, get, and, and feel like, oh, I made it, I arrived. Everything else is going to be easy from here on out. Um, and that's not the case at all. And, and my career has proven that time and time again. Um, if I look back at the fight against Damian Maia, I was uh, riding a seven-fight win streak, and here I am uh, flying to Brazil to fight Damian Maia, who at the time was um, 10 years older than me. And I'm like, Cool. I had this fight in the bag. All I have to do is go out there, beat David Maya, and I'll probably be fine for a Saturday next kind of thing. Um, and I'm underestimating him. I'm looking past him, and I'm not showing out to perform to the best of my ability, which that I know I could. Um, and I paid the price for it. I, I went out there um, and did not rise to the occasion at all. Uh, so being in the position I'm at, I am now, like one of the things that um, I'm, I'm constantly make myself aware of is not allowing myself to get complacent, not allowing myself to get comfortable, not allowing myself to feel like I've, uh, I've done enough and I can kind of take my uh, foot off the gas pedal, so to speak, and relax. Uh, and uh, let's let's back to the uh, to the fight uh, against the T Road. Uh, uh, were you surprised about something in the, in that fight from T Road? Um, no, not surprised at all. Um, I'm going to the fight, I knew he was a tough competitor. I knew he was a very good uh, softball boxer. Um, and my coaches and training partners did a good job preparing me for it. Um, he did surprise me in the second round uh, when he made the adjustment and started using his, uh, his jab a lot more effectively. Um, but as far as like the level of competition he brought to the table um, and how difficult that fight was, um, it was no surprise at all. Yeah, I remember when I was watching the first round, I was like, okay, Neil got, got him in that game when you were on the back and you're so stubborn and it's so hard because you're, you're lengthy and everything. And I was like, okay, this is the Neil's fight. And then in the second round, like he made the, he made the adjustment and I was like, okay, now is the problem, you know? And he, yeah. if, I, if, I were, if I'm um, correct in the third he connect you, eh? Were you hurt in that third round, at the beginning of the third round? No, it wasn't necessarily a shot that connected at one point or another. I was like, oh man, I'm stunned. Um, it was more so it, like... It uh, looked like that in the, in the, in, on, on video, you know, on TV. Yeah, it was... I might have to go back and double check, but I'm pretty sure it was like me just slipping or whatever else uh, um, that allowed him to close the distance. And I think he was even the one that initiated a takedown at that point. 
which definitely surprised me. But um, yeah, no point was that surprised at all. Uh, um, outside of him initiating the takedown and him uh, backing off from the grappling as well um, and giving the opportunity to get back to the feet. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so so most uh, one question uh, we have from uh, the guy who is the the like let's say the the guy who who made us to to do this podcast is he he was always asking me like uh, why is Neil the captain? How do you how the guys put you? <laughs> on that place as a captain of the team because it's it's not like the 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 you know like football and all of these sports where you must have the guy who is captain in MMA we don't have it and you're you're the the the, the maybe your team elevation fight team is maybe one maybe there is some other team but I did, never heard about the captain in the team so <laughs> how did you get to that spot? What do you think made you a captain of that team? Um, I think it was more so just the uh, the, the the character that, that that kind of came out for a lot of these guys. I mean, um, whether I would believe it or not, I'm literally one of the oldest guys on the team at this point right now. Uh, so that would mean I should be one of the most experienced ones as well. Um, so for, for the time that we were transitioning to, uh, from Muscle Farm to Easton, um, and and now uh, higher to martial arts. Um, when it came time for the, the the team to like the captain, I feel like they more so wanted to um, just survive with the experience of it. Like, all right, cool. Who is who's the guy we kind of like run some questions to um, outside of our coaching staff? Who's the guy we kind of can look to for some kind of support um, if the coaches aren't there? Who's the guy we can look to if we need um, help with things that like may not return to fighting like i mean a lot of times i have guys that would hit me up for um things that absolutely have nothing to do with fighting whether it's like hey neil my car won't start what do i do <laughs> like um and uh i was like yeah i can be there to support those guys and I'll help those guys out as much as i could um and it's just i just kind of the person i have this character the, 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 the just a, uh, a measure of my character so to speak where i'm always willing to give a helping hand to whomever it is and um not necessarily expecting to return this but like i'm fortunate to be in a position where um i'm able to help someone else and i'm always gonna uh, look for an opportunity to do so uh so i feel like a lot of the guys kind of like took note of that and took notice of hey we need a guy that we can rely on um for them there anything and i think it was that guy let's make him the captain <laughs> Yeah, and it is. I remember when you said the car. I remember when I fucked up my car, <laughs> and when you <laughs> literally we went to to the place where you can take the the old parts. You took it. You went for on YouTube. You check how the guy is changing that, and you literally fix my car by yourself. You know, <laughs> I, I know. I know why are you captain, but but my friend was always asking me, and, like, and I was like, okay, let's ask him. You know, and uh, yeah, so, so so the team is is growing bigger and bigger, and and there is a lot of new faces, uh, like in last couple of years and everything. Uh, Bo was last time here, Boan Velichkovic. Uh, he was talking, and he again mentioned you that uh, you were the guy who were supporting him most in the beginning uh, before uh, uh, yeah when he uh, came uh, from um, Miami and uh, uh, because we are filming this uh, just to introduce the the people in Balkan uh, to introduce them deep into the MMA so what do you think about the the, the like people from Balkan you had uh, Boyan you had uh, uh, it's not important me but Darko was there so yeah. uh, w what do you see the, the, the difference between the fighters from U.S. and let's say the Balkan and European fighters? Man, you guys really jump in and are, are, are very welcoming. Like, it's a very, like, uh, family-type atmosphere. Like, uh, Boyan, for example, um, it's one thing to go out and eat with your training partners, like go to a, a, a fancy restaurant or something like that and get some food with your, your training partners. But Bo's going to take it a step further. Bo's like, no, 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 I'm going to cook for you. Come to my house and I'm going to cook a meal for you. I should have spoon with you. You did the same when you came here. It's like, no, no, no. We, we want to actually show you uh, a piece of our culture. This is what we eat back home. This is what we enjoy back home. Um, and even when I went to Serbia to visit you guys, it was the same kind of uh, warm welcome. Like, uh, I remember going to uh, your house and I, I met your sister, I met your, oh, two of your sisters, and your mother yeah. was there. And it was like, hey, 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 come try this delicious, like, 
Serbian food that we cook. And they're like, no, sit at our table, eat, share food with us. It's a, it's, it's really, really good. Um, and it just shows like the, the, like the appreciation and, and love for other people in their culture. And that's how my grandmother was. My grandmother was uh, the kind of person that like literally would like, she want to feed everyone and, and, and share everything she had with everyone that she could. Uh, and with you guys, that's the same experience that I've had. I mean, uh, even one night that we went to uh, uh, Bo's mom's house in Serbia, it, it wasn't like, like, hey, go get a hotel room up the street. Like, no, we spent the night at her house like we literally i literally <laughs> slept in uh uh in her her guest room at her house there um and woke up she cooked breakfast and it was it was it was just a great experience and it's uh uh it's like family oriented and, and uh authentic it's not like this like facade like oh let's go to this fancy restaurant let's go to this fancy hotel let's go do xyz like no it's very uh close-knit community oriented where you get to like have that good one-on-one -on -one, uh interaction with someone yeah and uh yeah do you remember what you liked most when you were on the in the on the dinner uh, at my house do you remember, remember the name of no, that dish? The, sarma the you only... were eating you were eating only sarma <laughs> all the time that is like in the cabbage when you put uh Rock meat. Cabbage, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 you were eating and i was like hey try this and this and you're like no i like this <laughs> and I rem and I remember when you were eating. Um, uh, I know you you cannot uh, eat um, uh, cheese and all of these things because of uh, how do you say the your intolerance. Yeah, 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 intolerant. Yeah, and I remember you were so polite and you try cheese, <laughs> you try cheese, and then you had a little bit of problem with your stomach <laughs> as well. <laughs> But yeah, those are the great experiences. Like I literally remember that food and everything else there. Like that's just that's amazing. Like I was telling someone today, like, yeah, some of the fights are cool, but like the people you meet and the places you get to go because of fighting, like that's the kind of stuff that's gonna last a lifetime. Like um at this point, like, yeah, sure, I have a. Uh, I have 20 wins in the UFC, but honestly, I can't remember half those fights. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're all a bit of a blur. They all mesh together. But I can remember the experience of um, traveling to Serbia with my teammates and my friends. I can remember the experience of, like, being welcomed into their home by their family. I can remember the experience of, like, sitting at the dinner table and, and sharing a meal with their family. Um, and those, like, memories that are going to last uh, a lifetime, far long, far further than the, the, the memories of fighting world. Yeah, when we can uh, expect you to come back to Serbia? We are <laughs> now. Hey, hey, we are now. now <laughs> we are now. We are now opening the the gym next year, the big gym, like uh, some sort of in U.S. gyms, and uh, we would like to to have you to have you. Like I know it's four of you, but it doesn't matter. Still, you can come to my house, and <laughs> all four of you guys, <laughs> all four you uh, can sleep. I, I'm just joking, but. Uh, would you like to come back? Like we will really like to meet, uh, to, not to meet you, to host you, you and your family. No, hundred percent. Like uh, to go back to Serbia, one hundred percent. When I would the love date? To do that. The date? When's the grand when? opening? <laughs> <laughs> when? <laughs> you tell me when the grand opening is. If I'm not fighting that date, we'll schedule to be out there. <laughs> okay, I will. I will for sure. I will for sure. Uh, one other question that I wanted to ask just to introduce the people like everybody think like people in us uh it's easy life it's uh, uh everything is easier it's easier to get into the ufc so they have like a little bit um, i think uh, awkward point of view uh for everybody you know like in serbia everything is tough okay it's tough but it's not even in US, it's not, it's a bit easier because the UFC and everything is there. It's, it's like, let's say it's, um, it's where everything starts. But like, uh, I know your story, how you choose at one point you had to choose. So can, can yeah. you just explain to the people how was your beginning and everything and at th that changing, uh, th that, that main point when you were, choosing you will start to work or you will go to fight yeah yeah so that was a uh a choice i had to make several times throughout my uh my mma career i mean um early on when i first started competing in mixed martial arts at a professional level um it was 
geez, 12 years ago now. Um, so uh, oh, for us, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting <Thank> right. <laughs> uh, aging like fine wine. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, but <clears throat> excuse me. But 12 years ago, in order to get to the UFC, um, we didn't have many um, opportunities in a sense that like there weren't many uh, uh, regional shows that you were getting picked up from Go Straight to UFC. Like today, we have um, things like LFA. We have um, Dana White's Contender Series. We have the Ultimate awesome Fighter. We have all these different uh, routes to get to the UFC. Um, back then, you just kind of had to fight. Um, on a regional circuit, build up a name for yourself and hope you get called out or to try for the ultimate fighter. The ultimate fighter was like one of the um, sure ways of getting to the UFC. Uh, so for me, I had to, uh, knowing that I wanted to get to the UFC, I had to try to get on the ultimate fighter as many times as possible until I finally made it. Um, the first time I went to the ultimate fighter, um, I was 3-0. Dana White, Sean Shelby, Joe Silva, they all agreed like, yeah, you're okay, but you're not as ex- you, you don't have that much experience yet. Get more fights and come back. Uh, so I got cut. I went home, took as many fights as I could, wherever I could, whoever I could against, uh, came back again. Uh, at this point, I'm 6-0. Hey, I was here last time. You guys who need more fights. I got more fights. I'm ready to go to the ultimate fighter. And they were still like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. But still, not enough fights. Go back, get more fights. So I did the same thing. I went back home, took every fight I could, wherever I could. I went from uh, literally every corner of the U.S., north, south, east, west, that had a fight. Um, I was calling the promoters to try to get an opportunity to fight on their card. Uh, and went back a third time. Like, all right, here I am. Uh, you said I need more fights. I kept going back. I got as many fights as I could. I'm back again. This particular time when I start for the ultimate fighter, they were going to do uh, a live season with both welterweights and uh, lightweights. Uh, they decided to cut the entire welterweight roster and go to lightweights only. So I got cut for the third time. Um, at this point, I'm like, man, this is just, this is hard. I can't, I, I keep going back. They keep so many more fights and I'm just not getting picked up. I'm not sure. Um, if this thing is going to work out for me or not. So finally I, I go back home, I'm training, I'm fighting, I'm doing whatever I can to get vaccinated to the uh, uh, ultimate fighter. And there's another casting call yet again in Las Vegas. Um, at this time, I'm like literally dead broke. I'm like, fuck, I, I had to somehow find airfare, a hotel and travel to tryouts. And I, I couldn't afford it all. So I was like, how do I possibly make this all work? Um, so I jump on the internet. I find a cheap flight. And I'm like, okay, cool. I have enough money to fly to Las Vegas and I have just enough money to take a shuttle from the airport to where uh, the hotel that the tryouts are being held and then back to the airport. Um, so I fly in the night before the tryouts and I just sleep at the airport. I find a corner of the airport. Uh, I lay my backpack down. I just sleep there. Um, the next morning I wake up and I'm like, all right, let me go get ready. I brush my teeth in the, in the bathroom real fast, r- wash up, uh, and I go down to the shuttle. Uh, I take the shuttle over to the um, uh, casino where the uh, tryouts are being held, uh, and I'm I'm ready to go. I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm going through the tryouts and doing everything I need to do to get through. Um, I make it through the first two rounds of auditions and finally get to the interview portion where um, Dana White, uh, Sean Shelby and, and uh, Joe Silva in there again and I'm like here I am this is my fourth time trying out for the Ultimate Fighter you guys cut me three times I did everything you asked me to do you told me I needed more fights I went and got more fights you said I needed to do this I went back and did that this is my fourth time trying to get to the Ultimate Fighter what else do I need to do to get to the Ultimate to get on the show um, they looked at me they looked at each other and Dana White looks up and says that's it you're in and I was like wait what like like, seriously, I'm in. Like, yeah, you're in. Uh, we'll, we'll contact you, let you know when uh, when to come back, and we'll, we'll we'll see you in Vegas. And I was like, holy crap, here it is. This is my break. This is my chance to get to the UFC. Um, so I go home. I, uh, I I start preparing, start training as much as I could to get ready for uh, uh, for this opportunity for the, for the UFC. Um, and I get there, I get to Vegas, I make a sale to fighter, I win the first fight, I get into the house, uh, I win two more fights, and then I ended up losing in the semifinals, but it was still enough to earn my, uh, my UFC contract. Um, so at that point, I was like, that's it, I made it to the UFC, I got an opportunity to fight, we're good to go. Um, 
my first year in UFC did not go as smooth as I thought it was at all. Um, I ended up fighting three times that year. I won the first fight, but they went on to lose the next two fights. Um, and at that point, I was literally like, that's it. I'm, I'm about to get cut. Um, I, I didn't know if UFC was going to give me a fourth chance or not. I was just like, that's it. They're going to cut me. So... Uh, I walk into the gym and I, I, I'm telling my coaches, I'm telling my teammates, like, ah, oh, man, I think about the company UFC. I lost two fights in a row. Um, they don't normally give that many opportunities for people who lose two in a row. Um, that's probably it. And uh, one of my training partners is like, dude, just send the UFC a message and ask them for another fight and see what happens. And I'm like, all right, what do I have to lose? Let me go for it. So I send a message. I go on. I compete with training. And then, boom, sure enough, when I get done training, I go check my phone. I get an email from Joe Silvis uh, with another fight offer. So now I'm just like, oh, thank God I'm still here. Um, but along the way, it just hasn't been easy at all. Like when I first moved to Colorado, I had to make a choice between uh, moving to Colorado and, and, and pursuing the, uh, uh, my passion or my career of being UFC or joining the Chicago Police Force. And at the time, I was just like, well, I can always come back if it doesn't work out. But for right now, I need to go and join uh, this team in Colorado and try to get to the UFC. So I did that, and it, and it paid out. And when I lost the two fights in a row and I thought I was going to get cut, I caught myself yet again at a crossroads. Like, all right, do I, do I stop fighting and go apply for the Denver Police Department, or do I uh, take another shot at the UFC? And uh, luckily enough, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it all I have one more go and, and see if I can make a career out of it. And I... Uh, I did just that. They gave me another opportunity. Um, I was able to go on a seven fight win streak and really submit my spot in the, in the organization. And it's been all great things since then. And the rest is the history. Yeah, literally but, the rest is history. <laughs> but uh, not, not, not done. You're still not done. Thanks to God. And uh, yeah, so uh, in 2020, uh, you got uh, first kid, uh, Liam. And uh, yeah. What uh, what happened with you? Because I know what happened with me when I got the first kid. What changed in your career after you get a kid? First and um, then second, of course. It, it became more about it became less about me and more about them. Like I love the opportunity for kid for UFC, um, but at the end of the day, this is also the way that dad provides for his kids. At least in my case, it is. Mm -hmm. um, so when I go out there and fight now, I can't take these moments for granted because. It's not just me that I'm providing for, excuse me. It's my family. It's my two sons. Like, they, they need me uh, to go out there and do well in order for me to provide for them the things I need to provide for them. And not just that, be present with them as well. Like, uh, um, I'm very fortunate that, like, in between fights, I get to take some downtime and, like, um, get the opportunity to take them to school, put them to bed, uh, play with them all day long if I need to, and not necessarily feel like, oh, I have to go um, work from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. from right from. I get that choice where it's like, you know what? Today, I'm not doing anything to cancel everything on the schedule. I'm not going to the gym. I'm not going to work or anything. I'm literally just spending the day with my kids. That's what's most important to me today, and I can make that choice. Um, and I feel like that's the biggest blessing that uh, um, this career has, has presented to me most recently. Um, and in addition to that, like when I was first trying to get to the UFC and I was struggling, it was okay for me to like not have uh, not have certain things. Like I remember um, going to the grocery store at times where it's like, ah, oh, you know what? Um, money's pretty tight right now to my next fighter, so a uh, sponsor to whatever else. I can only afford to get chicken and rice this week at the grocery store no cereal no anything fancy just chicken and rice that's all I'm, that's all i can get i refuse to have to do that to my son i refuse to have to uh go to the grocery store and tell my son like, hey hey put that back daddy can't afford it uh because of the circumstances i will do whatever it takes to provide an opportunity for him life for them where he would never have to miss a meal or, or opportunity because of uh uh money or lack thereof uh, so once my first kid came around, the mindset changed where it's like, there's no, I'm trying, there's no, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to do this. It's like, I'm going to get it done one way or another. I'm going to find a way to get it done. That's the only option. Once I had kids. Yeah. It's hard for me to, 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 to think that you are not going to gym. <laughs> it's really hard <laughs> because I know you were the guy who is always there like two or three times a day. And uh, even when For you sure. are out of the camp and that's 
probably that is why you were always able to jump into the fights you have maybe you're the guy with maybe most uh short notice fights in the, in the <laughs> ufc if there is the ranking about this i think you are the 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 n- number one pound for pound <laughs> <laughs> yeah how many short, short notice fighter. yeah how many short uh short notice fights you have I want to say at least half of my career was short notice fights. I literally was very fortunate to put myself in a position where I made out a, a career out of fighting sh- uh, short notice, where um, a guy would fall out a week from a fight, two weeks from a fight, three weeks from a fight, the week of a fight. And I'm like, yeah, uh, sign me up. I'll take the fight. Um, and that really allowed me to kind of like uh, cement my place in UFC, but not only that, uh, separate myself from my peers in UFC as well. Yeah, it separates you for sure. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> for sure, because like you're you're number number one with the wins as a welterweight. And um, and uh, yeah, you are you are now again on that, that uh, uh, winning column that you you are able to fight if you get that Gilbert uh, Burns fight. And if, if you are able to win that, like I, I see you again uh, to one fight away from the belt. Yeah. Or maybe even, sure. yeah, it, it depends. Like, how do you see how do you see that welterweight division is now? Uh, what is happening? Like, how do you see uh, the next fights? Who is next into the line? From your point of view, of course. Um, and that's the other part I have to accept. Like, uh, with the sport of mixed martial arts, like, it doesn't always guarantee, like, okay, cool, you beat the number five guy, now you fight the number four guy. It, it doesn't always guarantee that way. At the end of the day, um, it is a business and it has to make sense business wise. Um, and I just look at how things have been done in the past. I look at a guy like, uh, um, excuse me, Jorge Masvidal, for example. Um, prior to him fighting Darren Till, Uh, I think he was on a two-fight losing streak at welterweight and uh, might have lost a couple before then even. Um, and he took some time off. He came back and he he was able to go out there and knock out Darren Till and then turn around and immediately get the the knockout against uh, um, uh, Ben Askren. Yeah. And those two fights within a year literally changed the career uh, or, or changed the, the trajectory of his career in just two fights. Like he went out there back-to-back, um, got the job done, and changed the trajectory of his career where he became um, one of the uh, most sought-out guys in the sport of martial arts to, to, to fight or, or market. Um, and those two wins earned him not one, but two opportunities to fight for a title. Um, and that's unheard of. So for me, being a position I'm in now, like I, I, I'm focusing less and less about like um, exactly who it is I fight or things like that and trying to focus more and more on the performance and how I fight. Like I guarantee if I go out there and whoever I fight next, whether it's Gilbert Burns or whoever else the UFC tells me to fight, I guarantee if I go out there and I fight to the best of my ability and, and uh, put on an amazing performance, I won't even have to ask for a top five opponent. They'll be giving me one uh, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope I hope we will we will see you, see you in the to fight. Uh, I would like to see that fight uh, against Gilbert Burns to be honest, because that will put you in the spot uh, uh, to be near that contender uh, uh, spot. And he fought against the Camaro. He fought for the belt, so he is the name to beat for sure. Yeah, and um, I would agree. Yeah, 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 he is the name to beat. I don't want to offend him, but yeah. Uh, tell me, uh, tell me now. Yeah. So now um, I will not take uh, any more of your time. Usually we have the. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's uh, uh, time difference here is late, and and I know you have a lot of uh, things to do, especially now when you have a kids. So uh, at the end, I have a few questions. We always uh, give fans uh, best questions uh, that we think. Uh, they are we we will ask you now uh okay. just just to check it's a couple of questions only four or five questions yeah okay um so uh vukcevic 22 uh what is your uh toughest fighting career oh man uh hands down it would have to be to fight against hector lombard um that dude is explosive and he hits hard like i remember uh seeing him standing in front of me and the next thing i know he's standing over me just beating the crap out of me it's like man how did i even end up down here like he was definitely probably one of the fastest and strongest guys i've ever fought so hector lombard okay uh next one 
So, Alexa Dubravac, uh, with which welterweight fighter you would like to have, a, to have or had fight uh, in, the, in your career uh, that you could say that is your dream, dream fight? Um, honestly, when it comes down to it, like it just, uh, I think I was just a little too late. Like I watched uh, Jersey and Pierre versus Johnny Hendricks. Like that was probably one of the best um, welterweight title fights uh, ever, uh, in my opinion. And I watched how close that fight was. And then um, Johnny Hendricks stayed around long enough where I was able to compete against him later on and win against him. Uh, so for me, like to, to kind of see how you would do against the, the best is what it comes down to. I would love to see how I would compete against George St. Pierre uh, if I ever was given that opportunity to. I, mean, I know now um, times have changed and uh, yeah. um, George St. Pierre at 40 may not be the same fighter he was at 35 or 33, um, but ideally in his prime uh, and me, my prime, would love to see that fight happen. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay. So just, yeah. So yeah, uh, just one second to see Go. who is this guy. Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't see the name. It doesn't matter. Uh, how? Yes, I think we 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 were talking about this. How did you get to? No, we didn't talk. How did you get to the to the martial arts? When did um, you start? How did you get it all? So I started martial arts uh, back in 2005. Um, at the time, I was in high school still. Uh, I was playing football, running track, and um, wrestling. Uh, and one summer, I had the opportunity to go train at a gym. Uh, and it just happened that Miguel Torres was renting studio space at that gym as well. Um, and I would kind of look over, and I see those guys over there grappling. I see them over there punching each other. I was kind of wondering, like, man, what is, what are they doing there? That's kind of cool. Uh, so. After a couple of weeks of going to this gym, I finally walked in and said, hey, man, um, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I kind of like it. I want to get an uh, introduction to it. What is it? Um, and that was the first time I got to train uh, kickboxing and jiu-jitsu, and I literally fell in love with it ever since. Yeah. Who was your role model? Uh, back then, it was Miguel Torres and uh, Matt Hughes. Uh, and fortunately enough, I was able to spend a lot of time training with both of those guys. Okay, nice. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so this question is um, this question is a little bit more for uh, Balkan and for let's say for Serbia because lately our MMA federation is working a lot uh, for the national team and things. So Dan Stokic 22 asked, um, "What do you think about uh, MMA national team?" And uh, the how it will uh, would it help to grow sports or uh, wh wh what do you think that uh, national teams in MMA will uh, help MMA to grow or you think it's not good idea because here we we look like um, we look on uh, national team and and uh, MMA in that direction that will. In maybe not next Olympic Games, but we could see that it can happen uh, that in uh, uh, one Olympic Games after this next one, uh, we can see in Los Angeles, let's say 2028, maybe it can happen that MMA is in Olympic Games. So what do you think about this uh, uh, Olympic Games things and uh, about national teams? <laughs> Um, I think it's, it's a it's great more, start. It's more amateur. It's more amateur now. Yeah. Now it's amateurs fighting for the national teams. And I don't see professional will fight. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a great start. I mean, one of the things that uh, uh, makes it hard for MMA to be recognized like some of the other uh, major sports leagues is the fact that we don't have a uh, um, an actual, like, 
introduction to professional mixed martial arts. Like um, uh, for a guy to be a professional fighter, all you have to do is like pass a physical and you can go out there and fight anyone and say you're a professional fighter. Um, so I think setting up a, a, a national team setting um, would kind of legitimize MMA even more and also create a um, – a, a standard or structure where um, a guy kind of has to like go through some hoops or some loops in order to determine like, okay, cool. This is the best of the best that we're getting um, at this particular level. Um, because right now with mixed martial arts worldwide, um, you see a lot of uh, uh, people padding their records. Like there was a, a guy most recently who um, – it made it to the UFC by lying. The guy said he had uh, so many <laughs> fights and it came out that half those fights didn't even exist and he was fighting under the wrong name even. Um, so I feel like getting an opportunity to get like uh, some international recognition on uh, some kind of like uh, structured um, uh, a team setting would kind of eliminate some of that where um, a lot of people who kind of uh, um, pad their records or, or, or beat these people that they know they can beat or whatever, um, a lot of that would get weeded out. Um, and as the a standard is set up for MMA, now we can have a standard for other things such as um, pay and, 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 and things like that uh, for guys who compete in mixed martial arts because right now it's just a free-for-all. So uh, actually this is happening and UFC is um, uh, I, uh, supporting the International MMA Federation that is the main federation for all, uh, all, all national teams in, uh, on the world. And uh, I was on uh, a World Cup I was watching and um, to be honest the amateurs are actually good as uh, professionals. You have yeah. national teams, especially like uh, like uh, these eastern countries where there is strong wrestling. You have literally yeah. professional wrestlers who know to box, and you you see they're like uh, physically strong men, like professionals competing as amateurs. So I think it's going in the good dire direction, and. I don't know like uh, how we'll all play, but I think this is like our sport. Our, our sport is uh, builded upside down, you know. Yeah, we yeah, and, are... that, and that thing is great because because like now we're just now getting to the the generation of guys um, who competed in in martial arts since they were kids. Like you know what I mean? Like uh, um, up until the last five years, everyone who competed in mixed martial arts came over from some sport. It was like, oh, this guy's a wrestler who's transitioning to mixed martial arts. This guy's a jiu-jitsu guy transitioning to mixed martial arts. This guy's a boxer transitioning to mixed martial arts. Um, I feel like we're just now getting to the era and the age that we have guys who have been competing in mixed martial arts since they were kids. Um, and now we get to really see the impact that these guys are going to have on the sport. I mean, most recently, USC signed a 17-year-old. Uh, a, <laughs> a literally guy that was... Sorry. Uh, most recently, you see signed a seven. Hello. Yeah, yeah I, I can hear you. <laughs> you see signed a seventeen year old. Um, so this is a guy who you think of. Uh, uh, you think ten years ago, twelve years ago, when he first started, um, mixed martial arts, like that was gonna make my 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 pro debut as an adult. This kid was a child. Uh, get his sport he's been doing it ever since at that level getting better and better and better uh so to see the impact that he has on the sport over the next couple of years is gonna be great to see because he'll be the first of many uh to start training this martial artist at such a young age yeah uh neil i will not take uh, any more of your time thank you a lot for uh, for having uh, for having us for having you thank you for answering to us and uh i hope to see you next year in Serbia, that, that yeah. 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 yeah, to eat Kruška, <laughs> to eat Kruška. I'll come to Kruška and tell everyone, Dad, thank you for yeah. coming out, yes, thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you a lot and, and uh, we wish you uh, best in the, your future career and we will watch you and we are waiting you live in our studio. Let's do it. <laughs> thank, thank you, you man. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, you too, bro. That's right, fine.
Ja, wir sind 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 